turns out that the gut is often referred to as the second brain because it has its own nervous system in, in the gut called the enteric nervous system. This is a network of millions of neurons that signal each, to each other like they would as if they were in our actual brains in our heads. And they use the same chemical factors and proteins to signal it to each other. So there are some very interesting findings about microbes in the gut that could affect the nervous system in the gut. And um, one interesting statistic is that microbes are required for a large pr proportion of serotonin synthesis, and they affect neurotransmitters and neuropeptides, signaling factors uh, for neurons. There's a lot of very ex exciting early evidence that the gut microbiota can affect the brain. Many of these stem from animal models. So you can raise different types of animals without germs, so without bacteria. Um, so they're genetically identical to colonized mice that have a microbiota, but just don't have bacteria. And so when you just test these two groups for behavior, it turns out that a lot of different behavior behaviors are altered. So this just means if you take away the microbiota, you can change behavior and different aspects of brain function. One very common example that's been well replicated is that if you raise mice as germ-free, they have altered anxiety, less behavior. And so um, that's just one example, but other behaviors include social behavior, communication, motor behavior, and others. There are studies, again, with animal models that if you subject mice or other animals to stress, you can see that there's a downstream or corresponding change in the microbiome. I think that's the hope for the future. Right now, it's still very early days. Where most of the studies are um, involving taking away all of the microbiome and then putting it back and see how, seeing how we can affect brain function and behavior. But to learn more, we really need to um, study mechanisms. So which microbes perform which functions and have which effects in the brain? And the goal is that in the future, if we learn these mechanisms, maybe we can use them to develop novel therapies.